Hello coin collectors out there. Welcome back to the Big D Coins channel. Here on this video, we're going to talk about this nickel right here, which is the 1954 Jefferson nickel. But there's one rather cool variety that's known to be out there. And there are actually many of them that have been graded by PCGS. So you have a decent shot at finding one of these. Um, at least there are you know, several hundred that have been found. So you might find one of them. So uh, this coin is also verified in the Cherry Picker's Guide to Ride, uh, ride Rare, excuse me, Rare Die Varieties of United States Coins. So this one is the 1954 S over D mint mark. So what that looks like is the die was initially received the D mint mark and was later struck, repunched with the S mint mark on top of it. Now that might seem pretty crazy to you. Uh, it seemed pretty crazy to me uh, when I first heard about that. And what was uh, kind of enlightening to me is that sometimes the different mints will actually use the other mints mint mark. So uh, just because your coin has the S, the D, or no mint mark on it, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's where it was actually produced. So sometimes like the Denver mint will use the S mint mark, they'll produce some uh, they might produce all of the coins for one particular year and then just run half of the batch with the D, then half of the batch with the San Francisco Mint Mark, then ship all the San Francisco Mint Mark coins out west. Uh, so that is something that could happen and probably what caused this particular error. Now this is verified on the uh, PCGS uh, CoinFAQs website as far as this specific error. Now what the Cherry Pickers Guide, their highest graded coin that they have listed is a Mint State 65, which is valued at $100. Now this agrees to what the PCGS CoinFAQs has for a Mint State 65. But what it doesn't show you is that there are actually have been eight graded by PCGS at a better grade than that. There have been eight that have been graded at a uh, MS66 with a price guide of $1,250 on those. And they've actually sold for that as recently as 2016. There was a MS66 uh, that sold at Heritage Auction for $1,116. Uh, for this particular era coin graded MS66. Now RPMs, repunched mint marks, are some of my favorite errors out there. Uh, there's a very, very wide variety of what can cause those specific errors. A few of them, uh, I've got this from errorreference.com backslash repunched mint marks. Here is a list of kind of some potential reasons why a repunched mint mark could occur. So let's share those with you. Uh, the first one is a failure to position uh, the letter punch uh, precisely over the first attempt uh, at repunching the letter. So they repunch the letter again. A letter punch that bounces and lands slightly on the rebound. So that could definitely happen. It strikes it, bounces back up, then lands again slightly again. Or uh, the third option was a letter punch is not uh, held vertically. This can cause it to skip, leaving a secondary impression. So I imagine that could happen relatively frequently if you don't get the coin in there exactly flat or the die pressing down completely vertical. Uh, the next one is an attempt to correct an initial uh, punch mark that was out of position. Another option is a malpositioned mint mark is incorrectly abraded and properly positioned mint mark is repunched in afterward. Uh, so the error of RPMs ceased in 1989 when the U.S. Mint began uh, placing the mint mark on the master die instead of repunching the mint mark into the working die. So uh, that really makes a lot more sense to me. Um, placing the mint mark on the master die rather than repunching all of these individually, uh, to me that would make a lot more sense. So what that means is when these ones were produced, these ones were produced prior to 1989. So they, uh, the master die was struck and then these individually came in later. So then what this website is saying is that in 1989, these uh, mint marks were part of the master die. So that makes a lot more sense. Uh, just strike it once with all the details on it. Now you might have noticed that these uh, mint marks are on the reverse of the coin. Uh, that's because these are made prior to 1968. 1968 is when all of the mint marks were ordered to be on the obverse of the coin. Uh, that happened from 1965 to 1967. You guys might remember that kind of interesting era of coins where they took out all of the mint marks to uh, kind of discourage people from hoarding them. 
And then in 1968, the mint marks came back, but they were all on the obverse of the coin. So prior to 1968, these Jefferson nickels uh, will be, uh, they'll have the, uh, the mint mark on the reverse of the coin, which is what we're looking at earlier. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you're into coin collecting, please do check out some of the other videos on this channel. I always appreciate the suggestions that you guys might have for uh, making videos. That's always very helpful. Uh, leads me to some new and interesting ideas to think of while making these videos. All right, enjoy and best of luck coin collecting everyone. Take care.